Yo, what up, friends? So, 3.21, the patch notes are out. Thing, I, I'm, ex dude, I'm excited. I'm, I'm super, super, super excited. And I can't wait to play. Crucible looks great. There are a lot of good. There's a lot of bad. There's a lot of random things that are going on. And I'm here to talk to you about one of the methods that I'm planning on starting with 3.21 to farm all of my currency. Lastly, we did a little bit of infinite heist. We jumped into maps. We found that Sanctum was printing divines. We did some blight. We did a little bit of everything, and it was great. Now, I've seen a lot of discussion, a lot of chatter in my Discord, on Twitch, about people don't know what to do. They're really confused. They're really worried. They're like, oh my god, how do I farm? There's no secret. There are two major nerfs in the patch notes that are, I don't want to say upsetting, but they're very changing towards the way that we're going to be handling farming in early game. Last league, I did Infinite Heist. I bought the Wing Sextant. I did the video on Infinite Wing Sextant. A lot of people profited very well off of that, and I was looking forward to doing it again. But unfortunately, that's one of two things that we're here to talk about today. The first one being Heist. We can no longer create Books of Regression. Existing Books of Regression will be destroyed when 3.21 hits. And that, my friends, is a song of goodbye that we wave to Infinite Heist. Heist is still going to be really good. I think Heist is still going to be one of the most profitable things you can do, both early, mid, and late game. I'm going to be doing a video on Heist shortly, uh, within the next couple of days. Don't forget to listen, subscribe, turn on the comments, hit that notification bell to be alerted when that's coming out, because I really have this strong feeling that Unusual Gems are going to be one of the best money-making strategies we'll be able to do outside of mapping this league. And I think contract farming is going to be at an all-time high with the loss of Infinite Heist. But I'll save that for that video. The other thing that I wanted to talk to you about today was Harvest. Now, Harvest got a bit of a change. And this makes things a little bit awkward for the guys that enjoy doing the Infinite Wing strategy. Now, Harvest, the crafting option that applies an enchantment to a non-unique map, causing it to not consume sex and charges, has been replaced with an enchantment for non-unique maps that provides 50% chance to not consume sexting use. That's rough. <laughs> that one, that one, that one hit me in the soul. I was a little sad. I won't, I'll admit it. That one hit me right, right here, man. Right, you got me. But with all things in Path of Exile, I think change is good. I felt the strategy was absurdly strong and very powerful. And you know what? If it's got to go, it's got to go. I will try to find a new way to farm wing sextants. I'll see if there's some world where buying the sextant and farming it up is ever profitable. I highly doubt it. I'm not really sure yet how we're going to be generating wing sextants, but if I figure it out, I'll let you guys know. And once again, as long as you have the notifications on and you're in the Discord, you'll know right away when I post a video about it and what I found out and what's going on. Now, today, I wanted to talk to you about what I'm going to be doing at my league start. I know a lot of you guys have been following along with the trick. The, the, <laughs> I know a lot of you guys have been following along with the Twitch stream. You see me be down bad for Ranger. This is before the patch notes. I loved everything about the leveling guide and the tree. I've been following Grimrose Lightning Arrow Artillery Ballista. Shout out to Grim. Your build is absolutely busted. Um, I made some tweaks to, towards my playstyle. I I'm I I can't begin to admit, like, oh my god, it's insane. I have it somewhere. I'm looking for it. I should have been better prepared. Is this it? Yes, this is it. I'm working on a I'm working on a build guide for you guys right now. I'm gonna have the whole leveling progression. The tree is gonna have the whole axe and what to do, and it's gonna walk you through everything. I've got a whole note section I'm working on. That's gonna be out in the next couple of days. I'm gonna be working on that a little bit more today. I'm gonna be, you know, fiddling with it and like that. But this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm gonna be playing lightning arrow, ballista totems, and I'm gonna go into maps. Now, I level the character already, and I would give you an Atlas skill tree, but as we know, they're making these new warping locations on the Atlas skill tree, so I don't have the Atlas tree ready for you yet. Instead, I'm going to show you a basics of what I'm doing. Now, as you can see, there's no surprise. I'm revisiting our good friend, Sister Cassia. Now, this build crushes Blight. It has been absolutely demolishing both Blight in maps, Blight in Blight in maps, and I'm currently doing it on a four link with gear that's not very good. I have like a 700 DPS bow. I've got a pretty okay helmet and just poopy gear like all around. And I've been testing it into white, yellow and pushing into red maps and both in blight and out of blight, it's been fantastic. Now, the way I have done my Atlas tree, things are gonna change up drastically because along, alongside the video that we saw for the blight release or for the, the patch note release, 
there are warp gates and i think we can actually negate these points here plus some other points and as soon as that atlas tree is available for us to mess around with i will get you the best atlas tree that i'm planning on starting with and how i'm going to be doing things but my current plan is to come up the right side here grab these map nodes come up here for more map nodes go straight up here there's a warp from what i saw in the video there'll be a warp somewhere over here that warp will take us somewhere over here and then i can go to these blight nodes now i know the pathing's a little weird and a little strange and that's because i'm like trying to figure out where i want to do and how i want to do with things with warping and what order i want to do things in and the order in which i'm currently planning on doing things is to come to this giant wheel first i still think going into the right side and taking the warp over is probably the play because there are more things on the right side of the tree for other farming strategies that we'll get into later but I want to come over here and I want to take this giant wheel first. This wheel gives us a variety of blight chests. Three blighted chests are lucky. Blight chests in your map have an 80% chance to contain blighted maps. Now, note the new Atlas tree isn't out yet at the time of recording. So if the Atlas tree changes drastically and all these nodes get swapped around and things get moved and things get changed, I'll take down this video. I'll make a note on it. I'll redirect you to the new video and I'll do a whole new video that updates all these changes. But currently, if nothing changes, I want to take this node because this one gives us blight chests in your map have an 80% chance to contain blighted maps and this one gives us the blight crafting option is always available i know immediately somebody's going to raise their hand and say but scarabs are better yes i agree scarabs are better but scarabs might not be readily available on day one we don't know what the plan is on day one we don't know how much scarabs are going to be yet i assume scarabs are going to be roughly the same price that they are now but on the off chance they're not and i get to maps faster than the average player my current map time is about four and a half hours I'd like to get started on Blight as fast as possible and get into some of the earliest Blight maps that I can get into. Now, the Blight crafting option on the map device is 4C. You can't see it here because I have a free crafting option. But as long as that doesn't change, it should be 4C a Blighted map, which is roughly the cost of a Scarab. And if I can map, push my Atlas, and Blight at the same time, I feel like it's a huge win-win. So I'll take this whole node to get chance at Blight map you know, usage. I'll take this for Blights to have additional reward chests. I'll aim to get blighted maps and all blighted maps are really good we saw last league in sanctum that a lot of content creators were farming blight they made an absolute killing farming blighted maps and toxic sewers there's going to be a lot of maps again i think toxic sewers is still in the rotation there's a bunch of really good maps that we could once again just farm blighted maps on and sell blighted maps to me i'm going to buy them all my community is going to buy them all a lot of us are going to be running blight blight is going to be king and blight's going to be one of the best things that i capitalize in early league now, after I take these nodes, I'm going to come over here for enchants that blight encounter in a map. On the off chance I run out of C, I just want more blight chance and more blight encounter. If I run out of currency and I take these, these are really good. If you don't want to use the blight, you know, if you don't just, they're, they're good nodes. They just give you more chance of blight. You can't really go wrong. I'm also taking these up here because I want more oils and I want more blighted maps. So if I were to go in order, I would go here. I'd come up here and then I would grab these. Now, I know somebody's probably screaming, well, what about immune response? At the time of testing, my build was not capable of doing immune response because the mobs in single lane maps were spawning too fast and overwhelming me. This is a very good node. This entire wheel is very good. Like, very, very, maybe not spores in the wind, but the entire wheel is really, really, really good. I do not recommend taking it until your character is a strong mapper and that you can be overwhelmed with mobs and kill all the mobs and have your ring annoyed. It will be good. I will have it probably by the end of day one, maybe the beginning of day two. It is a very strong, solid node. I would definitely go for it as soon as your character is capable. I can't tell you when that is because I don't know the progression of you as a player and I don't know the progression level of you and your character. So instead, I will advise you to go up here towards these, which is where I'm going next on this character, where my Blight Towers and Minions deal 20% more damage and the pump has more durability. Also, Blight Monsters in your map take 8% increased damage, and this will help you get to Immune Response. Now, originally, I was a little over the place with figuring out where I wanted to go, and without having the warp arounds, it makes things a little awkward. But I do think there's a world where on day one, farming and getting into Blight is going to be one of the most profitable things you can do, especially now that Infant Heist is gone. And even if you aren't running your blighted maps because you don't like running your blighted maps, we will buy them. I will buy them. My community buy them. Players on the trade website will buy them. Players on TFT will buy them. They will sell and they will sell well and they will sell good. And you will be able to farm and fund everything that you want to do. One of the biggest things that I hear from a lot of people is you talk about these crazy bills and you talk about all these things and I don't know how to do it. 
Oh, let me show you and let me teach you and let me just bring you to light because Cassia is king. And if I don't say that, she might hurt me. But anyways, <laughs> as soon as the Atlas tree is available and I can get it over to you guys, I'll get it over to you guys. I think Blight is going to be really good. I'm planning on complementing it with Legion. I've never really done a Legion strategy before, but I think mapping with Legion might be really good. Altars, I still think, are going to be really, really, really fantastic. I've never played a Lightning Arrow character right off the bat. I've never played a Ranger right off the bat, so this is going to be a very new experience for me. And I'm going to be experimenting with a lot of different farming strategies. I have a hunch and have a feeling Abyss might be actually busted, like, beyond belief this league, and I plan on testing Abyss. I still think Heist is going to be really good. And one of the things that I wanted to say and mention in this video is I think I am going to pair my Blight maps with heist and my farming with heist now there's a node that i wanted to bring your attention to on heist that says huck accompanies you opening the first smuggler's cache in each of your maps so i mentioned this in a previous video huck has the ability to get auras on him and huck has the ability to accompany you in maps now you can equip huck with a wide variety of auras determination grace haste to cover up some of those mana issues that you guys are referring to that aren't really that bad, but people are thinking it's the end of the world. So I plan on taking this note as soon as I can. I plan on getting Huck. I plan on putting Huck with some rogue gear when I get the currency to do it. And I'm just gonna bring him around. Now there's another really good node that says, smugglers caches in your map have a 10% chance to contain blueprints for each map. Smugglers cache, you know, smugglers cache drop 10% rogue more markers and your maps that contain smugglers caches have a 5% chance it contains six additional smugglers caches. Now we learned thanks to the patch notes that if we look up heist really quick, heist is on the map device. Heist contains two additional smugglers caches for six chaos. Every single map that I go into, once blight scars become readily available, I'm planning on putting heist. Like, just click the button. Have Huck in every map. Have Huck with auras in every map. Just follow you around, do the thing. Like. It's not bad. It's pretty strong. And you just get to farm blueprints. You get the farm blighted maps. You get to sell all that. And you just profit. It's profit. It's crazy. Now, I know people are going to be saying, well, how do I sell the blighted maps? How do I sell the contracts? How do I sell this? How do I sell that? Blighted maps, you could sell. I'll buy. Blighted maps, you could sell in the Discord. My Discord, people will buy. Selling blighted maps on the trade website is really great. If somebody pings you to buy a blighted map, ask them how many. And they'll usually buy you out. If you like TFT, TFT has a great section where you can bulk sell blighted maps and people will buy you out. Same goes for contracts. Deception, perception contracts sell really, really, really well. Blueprints sell really well. Now note, when you have a blueprint, people don't realize this and talk about this. When you're selling a blueprint, if you have a fully revealed blueprint, it sells for more than a unrevealed blueprint. Two wings sell for less than three, three sells less than four, so forth and so on. So just keep an eye on the blueprints that you're getting. Unusual gems will be king. Replicas early will be great. Experimental items day one, day two will have all your five links, your six links, your good statted items. If you are planning on still doing heist, you should still do heist. If you're planning on blighting and heisting, you should do both. You will see come league start, I will be mapping, I will be blighting, I will be taking these heist nodes and I will be going in on this. The last thing that I'm planning on complimenting my maps with very, very, very early is the lab trials. And I know a lot of you guys are giving me that look, but gifts of the goddess will start to sell. And even if you hoard them for a little bit, they'll be great. I've got a buddy who's probably gonna be watching this video. Hi, Jerio. He will buy all of these from you. You can find a link to his stuff down below. He's in the discord. You can ping them. He'll buy them right away from you. And it's gonna be great. And I know a lot of people are probably talking about essence. I know you guys probably see me have essence. My character in its current state can do very basic essence. I have the node for very basic essence. I can do very basic essence. As I get more gear and I swap off the Raider variant to the Deadeye variant, I assume essences will be a little bit easier. I'll have a little bit more damage and I'll be able to kill them better. And when I get to that stage, I'll put essence on. But I don't want to advocate essences yet because I don't know if I'm going to be doing essences. And I want to share with you what I know I'm going to be doing that's going to be farming all of my currency. Every single league since you guys have known, I have done Blight since Blight has been available. And Blight has always been the pathway to my Headhunter and Mage Blood, and it's gonna be the same pathway I take this time. It might not be the fastest, but it's very good, it's very strong, it's very consistent. And I'll have it when I have it. 
I'm hoping to have a headhunter by the, you know, couple of days and a mage blood a couple of days after, but we'll see what happens. You can follow and track all my progression on the farming on my Twitch channel. You can ask me a bunch of the questions in the Discord. The Discord is insanely active. There'll be links to everything down below. And as I mentioned, once the Atlas tree is available with all the warp gates, I'll figure out the best way that I'm planning on doing things. And then I'll share that with you guys. So make sure you keep an eye on this. Keep an eye on the Discord. Hit the notification bell. And all of that will give you all the updates that you need for when they're available. Now, as far as my build guide goes, I'm going to be going live on Twitch shortly. I'm going to be testing out the build guide that I put together. I'm going to be giving it one or two run throughs from Act 1 to Act 10. I'm going to make sure everything goes smoothly. I'm going to make sure all the leveling trees line up to the right spots so that you guys have the most simplistic way of doing things. Once I confirm and fix any errors and issues that I built last night on the tree, I will be releasing a video about that, and I'll be walking you guys through all that, what to do, what steps to take, how to do things, and... Thanks again, Grim, for making the guides and the videos and showing us how to do it. And it's it's absolutely fantastic. But for now, let me get out of here, get this video edited out to you guys, and then I'll see you guys in the Twitch stream or in the Discord or in the next video. So long!